Cool. Okay. So this is episode ten. Ten of ten? Uh, the Broker Banter podcast, and it is sponsored by Bupos. Roll the tape. Thanks, guys. Now we're going to talk about our episode sponsor. Bupos. So let's get into what Bupos does. So Bupos is an online business marketplace. If you are looking to buy an online business, take a look at Bupos. They have some great businesses listed. And on top of that, I actually quite like the analysis that they do on each listing. It makes it very easy to get through a lot of listings. As you can imagine, there are a lot of marketplaces out there. There are a lot of businesses for sale out there. But Bupos makes it easy to actually quickly analyze and see if I like this business or not. Another thing that Bupos does is on some of these listings, they actually provide some financing on some of these listings. So if you're interested in those finance deals or even the deals that don't have financing or just interested in Bupos in general, take a look at their marketplace and let's get back to the podcast. Well, let's crack into some business reviews. Um, so this is one, an SBA pre-qualified Amazon FBA brand from Magnetic website closes. Collar stays. Now I immediately think this is dumb, like I usually do with fads, but the utility and design patents in place, 18 years in business, so it's not a fad. 80% Amazon, 10% D2C, 10% wholesale, going every year since 2021. That's not a massive flex, but I'll take it. So to start off, let's talk numbers, asking price, 4.2 mil. Cash flow, profit, 900K. Revenue, 2.6 mil. And it is 18 years old. For a while. Yeah. So it's, been, it's just over a four times multiple. Mm-hmm. Getting my numbers right this time. Um, so maybe we'll have to get into, talk, talk to me about magnetic collar stays. I think the last time I wore a collared shirt was at my wedding. So a couple <laughs> years ago, it's not a not a common wear for me. What's the benefit? Why would I wear a magnetic collar stay? Well, here's the thing. I don't know what it is. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, keep yeah, your, yeah so keep your collar yeah, yeah. shapely. I just don't understand why you need a magnetic one. Mate, I've got no bloody clue. I I still don't understand what it is. I assume it's a collar stay that is metal, but I just don't understand the benefit of it being magnetism. Of it, yeah. What do you get to do with a magnetic one? Man, I have no idea. Okay, talk so about new niches, yeah, right? What a niche. Stiffies. That's a good brand name. <laughs> That's gold. Droopy shirt, okay. Keeps your collar perfectly in place. Oh, is it so that they don't come out? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. They will allow you to place your collar in any position you like. Great. Okay. We figured out why one might wear a magnetic collar stay. I don't want to listen to this that guy explain it. That is pretty stiff. That, was a st- that guy's got a stiffy. Yeah, he's got a stiffy. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Great. So it you can you can you can shape your collar however you want. Um, I didn't know it was a problem. Talk. I mean, so many people talk about businesses failing because they're creating solutions for problems that don't exist. But I guess there are enough collared shirt guys out yeah. there who really want to be able to shape their shape their stiffy. Who yeah. doesn't want to shape your? It stiffy? must be stiffy. Uh, we haven't received we haven't signed an NDA for this, but it must be that. You think it is? Because it's the only branded. Well, we're in the UK right now, so yeah, that's just that true. might be why. Um, but they do say they've got this this patent on it, so yeah. who knows? Um, if it's not stiffy, yeah, and they've got a utility patent on it, well, it's SPA to, pre-qualified, so it must be US. So it's US based, and Stiffies was a, a UK business. So right away, I'm like, do they have a utility patent that they're not enforcing? Mm. If you haven't been enforcing a utility patent, there's actually then anyone can start violating it and say, hey, you haven't defended yeah. your patent previously. So we're actually allowed to get around your patent because you haven't been defending it. I never knew so much about patents before you told, started telling me so much about them. Oh, I'm kind of like morbidly fascinated by them yeah. because people think, people. I remember when I started getting into business, people would talk about patents like they were a shield. Like, yeah. oh, if you like patent a product, yeah then no one else can do it. Mm. And over time I've learned they're a sword and they're Mm. a really expensive sword. So you can file your patent, you can get a PCT, you can do your Paris Convention Treaty and file in all sorts of countries. And um, I think we've talked about PCTs before, but that's where you like, say you file in the US, your patent, your utility patent, and then you file a PCT. 
uh, if you get your PCT and your US utility patent, then you can file in all sorts of countries internationally um, using your original US patent, so you don't have to pay for translation and mm -hmm. it's cheaper filing costs in each country. But you still have to pay for con per country. What will that ch cost charge you? Oh, it depends on your law firm, but yeah. I think I think minimum nowadays you're looking somewhere between 500 to 1,000 per country. <laughs> Likely it's going to be more in some of them. And then there's annual maintenance fees. Yeah. So every country that you file in, you're actually like subscribing to a fair amount of overhead. And that's just to maintain the patent. If yeah. someone actually violates it, you do have to go out and pursue them. You have to show, be able to show that you've pursued them. Because if yeah. you don't, then people can say, okay, you're not defending this patent, so we can go out and if you're not defending it, then you know it's open season. Well, I see, I, I learned a bit about this space just from EasyJet. So I met the owner of EasyJet, uh, well, founder of EasyJet, Sergio Sadziwano, because he's Greek. And his business now, he doesn't, sorry, he doesn't own EasyJet. Yeah. He started it, but he owns Easy, the brand. Right. He owns the color and yeah. the yeah. lowercase yeah, the Easy. Orange. And so 4% of, so the EasyJet pays him 4% of revenue. And all that the easy seems brands. like a lot. Yeah. Of revenue? Yeah. Okay. And um, I'm pretty sure. Let me check. Easy brand, 4%. Maybe. Easy.com. And so the easy hotel, easy ferry, easy everything, just pay them that on top. <laughs> um, Stellius. Cool. And... Uh, yeah, all, all he does is just collect that, and he's make he makes stupid money doing that. Um, but he, all he, like these are all the easy brands, easy right. hemp, and he doesn't he doesn't operate any of these. None. No. He operates this. Just if you want to be easy, yeah, you gotta call Stelios. Yeah. So uh, and then he just spends it on his philanthropic stuff. He wants to you know run out of money by the time he dies, like the Giving Pledge with Bill Gates. Yeah. And he's got five bills to burn through, so. <laughs> Um, Poor guy. Yeah. Is it, are we in Kensington? Is that close? We're not far from Kensington. Um, but, I mean, he does. He's very active in defending that patent. Well, trademark, sorry. That's like a 20-minute walk. Oh, nice. Hey, he doesn't live here. He lives in Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. No, patents. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, a 23 repeat order rate. Not bad for, I mean, they might damage over time. Mm, getting more shirts, getting you more lose shirts, them. Yeah. But I guess it doesn't make sense if you're losing them. Why? Okay, so they've got an AOV of 44.16. What's interesting to me here, AOV of 25.74 on Amazon. So they're probably selling more units, mm. obviously, per order on Shopify. Um, the average customer is a male professional, makes over 100. So it's kind of, yeah, a, it's a banker bro. To mm, banker, sorry, any banker bro. bros listening to this. Um, but uh, that, it sort of makes sense to me, but the AOV being that low, in my experience, that's not quite a high enough Shopify mm. AOV for me to feel comfortable running ads. 80. Like I get kind of excited around like 120 AOV, really? but that's just, that's like, I have a very particular kind of set of that's why way that I- raises are so expensive. You want that high? Those razors cost a lot to manufacture. Yeah. Um, so, like, but that's where I get more comfortable because the higher your AOV, ultimately, like, if you're if you're working on the target gross margin that I yeah. operate on, then it gives me more room to acquire a customer with. Like this, that's just not a lot of margin room to go out and run mm -hmm. ads on. I'm not saying that you can't do it. I'm just saying like you you've got a lot less kind of margin of error, so to speak. Um, if they genuinely have no competitors because they they own and defend a utility patent, great. But I don't know how much utility patent defense you're getting away with. What what was the? I mean, it's not that big a space. It's not a it's not a huge business. If they're number one, which they claim to be, They've been around for twenty years. Oh, I, good for them. Ultimately, I'd say good for them. I like a business that looks like this. Four employees. It's been around for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I'd want to see, like, how stable is this? Like, how good a job are they doing defending the patents? But you know me. I love a crazy deep e-commerce mm -hmm. niche. Go way, way, way deep down. 
they're probably getting quite a lot of organic sales yeah. at this point, right? Because you've just been around for that long. I also think, you know, let's say, so you buy this business, the type of people who are coming in, people with money yep. from the West, with yep. bloody good jobs, who care about their suit so much, they want their collar to be perfect. They want to shape their collar. They want this collar like yeah. that. Yeah. And they that want means to be able you to can also sell them how it... ties, which yep. are cheap, tie clips, yep. uh, cufflinks, uh, sock holders, like all sure. these, uh, yes, uh, what are they, like garters or whatever they're called to hold them. Like all these small things that are easy to ship. Yeah. Probably pretty damn cheap to make. Yeah, they've probably got a pretty good customer list. Yeah. So you'd have to look at like what else are they selling? Is there, uh, that's a great point. Like you could do some product expansion. That's what I love for these sorts of businesses. They've been around for a long time. If you get something like this, um, I know so, like there's another brand in the, the shaving niche that they sold to private equity a year or two ago. And I was like, I'm curious what they're gonna end up doing with it. But I admire what they've done. Um, I won't name the business, but they've massively expanded their product innovation, like way mm. faster than any other company I've seen in like the classic shaving niche. Um, I have no idea if it's performing really well for them, but typically what I've seen when that happens, like that level of rapid product innovation yeah. does typically result in expanding your customer base and you're just getting longer LTVs out of your existing customer mm. base. So. If you have the ability to kind of tack on the, all the products you just listed, you could private label every single one of those yeah. things. Like that's not, 100%. by product innovation, I mean literally just release new products, purchase the inventory, maybe even drop ship the inventory. Um, but 20 years, I imagine that this business, assuming that these numbers have been looking like that for a while, mm. they've got a pretty healthy, pretty healthy customer base, yeah. I'd imagine. Um, this is a great business. I like this business. I don't, I don't mind the valuation. I think it's a reasonable clearly on on amazon um i don't mind this they've been they've expanded countries now sell and yeah this business frankly like the it, it looks the profile looks a lot like uh look like my shaving business so i mean i'm a fan Beautiful.